Hi folks, let's talk about and let's show how to balance a grinding wheel. For those of you that may be new to the channel, we just finished up a project where we built this surface wheel balancer. There are many different ways to do this, and our understanding is this doesn't even have to be that accurate of a device. In fact, one of the videos that we've watched is Don Bailey over at Suburban Tool, and the device that he uses looks pretty rinky-dink, and it accomplishes the same thing. If you are interested, the past two Wednesday widgets, we've gone over the Fusion 360 CAD and CAM on how to make this wheel balancer card here to the build page where we've got all of the uh, bill of materials as well as the Fusion 360 CAD model. Brand new grinding wheel. This is a Norton 46K that we purchased from McMaster Car. Again, part number and all over on the NYC CNC website. First thing you want to do with any grinding wheel is the knock test. You need to hear a ring, not a thud. If you hear a thud, it goes in the trash. Threading it onto the arbor is a left-hand thread. That's not uncommon in the surface grinding world. And here, you don't want to go too tight because you could actually crack or crush the wheel, but you need to go tighter than the force you're gonna use to put this on the grinding wheel, if that makes sense. And it's got these three metal lugs. Those are going to be the key to how we balance this system. Before we can start balancing it, we've got to true up the outside relative to how it's mounted. So you can't just put the thing right on your wheel balancer. I don't even think it would really work. So we're gonna clean off our arbor. I'm using a lint-free rag. Mount the wheel onto the arbor, thread it on. And then we'll use a pencil line. I like pencil over Sharpie, because Sharpie I find bleeds in more. And pencil just gives me a mark right on the outside of that wheel. And we're gonna dress the wheel enough to clean up just that outside. The point is not so much to dress the wheel as if we're preparing for a certain type of grinding, but rather just to true it up before we balance. Before I dress it, I'm gonna let my spindle warm up. This machine's been off for a few months. 10 minutes would be plenty. Again, the point is just to be methodical with grinding. If your arbor is sticking, ever so slight of a hammer tap, I'm using a brass hammer here, should get it off. Do not whack on your spindle bearings, please. So my method, and I've never seen this before, is to put numbers across the wheel. It makes it so much easier to see what's happening on the wheel as we try to balance it. And yes, it's sensitive. No, the pencil lead is not going to imbalance it. We built bubble levels into our balancer. Why? Because we wanted to and they look great and I think it's nice to know. It is not critical that this is balanced. In fact, I don't even believe it has to be level. I like it because to me it just eliminates one less uh, issue. Checking the bearings on our new grinding wheel balancer to make sure they're free spinning. That's important to this. We'll mount it on our arbor. And as we mentioned in the last video, the arbor is probably the trickier thing to make. And I've been chewing on how we can either machine, turn, or grind that here in our shop to make a second one. So starting with one at the top, let's see what happens. Two at the top, try to find the heavy spot. So now three's at the top and you'll see it starts to move. So what does that mean? Well, if you go back, let's rewind for a second. Three was probably not the heavy spot, but rather we might have an issue at five. I keep saying five o'clock, but at five, it caused that wheel to move a bit clockwise. Keep walking around it. Nothing at five. Not much at six. So at seven, look what happens. Five now moves it counterclockwise. So I do think we've got an issue where it's a little bit heavy at five. Eight, steady, awesome. Let's walk through it again, and you'll see one steady, two steady. Now three didn't move here. So that's very interesting to me. Let's keep going around though. Let's see what happens, and sure enough, when we get to seven, that five does cause it to move counterclockwise. So I still think we've got something of an issue here. I wanna do a test though. This grinding wheel weighs about one pound five ounces or 21 ounces or about 600 grams. A single quarter by 20 nut weighs about 0.1 ounces. Our scale isn't that accurate, so we put 10 on there and 10 weigh about one or 1.1 ounces. 
That means our grinding wheel is about 200 times heavier than this quarter 20 nut. And all I'm trying to do here is give some is give some amount of weight and measurement that folks I think will be able to relate to. So we're going to take a piece of tape and just tape that nut. Now, in fairness, we're taping it all the way to the outside of the wheel. So that's where the weight will have its most effect on the rotation. But I want you to see when we have that weight at 12 o'clock or right at the top, it doesn't appear to affect the imbalance of the grinding wheel. But as soon as we move that weight off to the side, look how quickly and how much influence that weight that again has one 200th the mass of the whole wheel. Look how much it's able to influence the balance of that wheel. What's exciting to me about that is that tells me that yes, I want to try to adjust these weights to get that issue at number five out of there. I, and grinding is all relative. There's sort of one of those things where there's just no such thing as perfection. Robin Renzetti did a phenomenal clinic at our open house last year talking about the balancing and use of a grinding wheel and how you can get these micro waves in your parts from balance that is almost impossible to get out at certain levels. Nevertheless, let's adjust these weights. So if we're too heavy at five, take a look at the weight at four. What I'm going to do is move it away from four toward three. My advice is also bring your notebook. It's so difficult to remember what you're doing, and it's easier to get that out of your head onto paper, especially when that phone call comes up or that interruption comes up or you go to switch a tool on a different machine. Let's bounce it again. So with two up, look at it. It's moving toward five being heavy. Put it at three, which will make, if five is heavy, it'll move even more deliberately. And sure enough, we can see here, look at that. So we've got to get some weight away from five. I, I think I went the wrong way. We should go from four back toward three. But that's what makes it so easy. When you've got all the numbers on here, it's less frustrating and there's less, in theory, less chasing your tail. So one is up, pretty good. Roll it to two. Still got some weight at five. At three. Ooh, now we're better. Four. Good. And, and folks, chime in. The folks that have done this for their whole lives, I'd love to hear your opinions. Five. Good. Six. Good. Seven. So this should be, yep, we're good here. Great. So that, if anything, it changed. That's what's awesome. Eight. Being able to make consistent and predictable changes is, is half the battle to getting it fixed and balanced. Back at one. And let's try this two again. Moving just ever so slightly, but really not much. And if we were wanted to take it to next level, we could do all this over again on this sort of half positions between three and four, between four and five. But three and seven were the problems before. They're not moving now. We, other than that little bit of movement at two, we haven't introduced new movement. Awesome. So what's next? Well, for me, I'm really approaching this as a fresh start to learning how to grind. I was really inspired by this book and there's such an eloquence to the content that it talks about and there's so much to grinding. It's really fascinating. Also, we've had some fun experiences learning with our Okamoto service grinder card here to the video where we kind of an overhaul uh, rebuild on that machine. But for us, next up for the Tormach service grinder, we just added the Noga Mini Cool. I broke a cable on the limit switch. I've got to fix that. And then I want to be just very, very methodical and understanding the, what I'm doing, how the machine is set up, the right processes to really learn how to run a small service grinder. It's a super useful tool and it's something that I want to be able to walk up to and have confidence in. And that's not where I'm at yet, but we'll get there. Thanks for watching folks. Take care. See you soon.